Hey, he's reared up in Africa. What part of Africa was it, Captain Key? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. They changed that name now, though, isn't it? Is it the same? It used to be Rhodesia. Rhodesia. Oh, okay. Rhodesia. All right. Well, the same thing. And he's, if you'll ever get finished and done with it, you're supposed to be writing a book. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. It'd be interesting to... Yeah. Be interesting to read that. I'd love to have a copy of that. And then, you see him being here. Is, and, um, all right. First Peter, the fourth chapter. Somebody said something a while back. They said, we just get tired of hearing all about this end time gloom and doom. <laughs> well, like it or not, it's Bible. I just... You know, I, sometimes I think we need to read it. We need to preach on it because don't think the preacher's making this stuff up. This is coming right from the Word here. Amen. People fill their minds full of a bunch of Hollywood nonsense, but they, this is reality. This is not fiction. This is factual. Amen. And I think we need to be reminded we have revival. We have revival uh, beginning. I hope it, it's begun in our hearts already. But, but by tomorrow evening we'll be congregating together and we're coming here all prayed up and fought up and and, uh, and and we won't see the Lord move. I might add this. I know uh, Pastor Jeremy, they're really looking forward to this revival and their church will be here to, to merge with us. And he even talked about calling off Wednesday night to be here all three nights. So, all right. And uh, so uh, in, in Chiefland, that is. And they will be here. Uh, pretty sure Brother Derek and some of his crowd from Bell will be here. And we'll just have to see what the Lord does. We've checked the invitations out, the invites. I will say I got we have some flowers here on the front pew. I failed to make mention of that this morning, but we need to get some hung up down at Hitchcock's and, well, whatever they call that store anymore. I guess they don't call it Hitchcock's, but you know what I'm talking about. And uh, also on Carl City and wherever we can hang them up at, let folks come by and they see that and say, hey, they're having revival with my crowd. We, we better go over there and see what's going on. And uh, we've tried to get everybody's attention. If you notice, we got a whole bunch of red banners out there along the highway. I don't know how anybody could not notice that flying up down 349, so maybe that'll get some of their attention. Miss Betty never seen it. <laughs> now, how did I know that was coming? <laughs> Well, as I recall, Miss Betty's not the only one that ran over one of them. I think there was a prelude. I said somebody else hit, them. We hit one the day before. But I will have to confess, it didn't have the red flag up yet. It was just the, the round one. So. Now, you remember, we, we preached this quite a few times. Some will accuse you of the things they're guilty of. Remember that? <laughs> All right, First Peter, that fourth chapter here this evening, in that seventh verse, the Bible says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That's a lot of sin, by the way. All right. I want to read over here in the in that same chapter, in that seventeenth verse. We went from verse seven over to verse seventeen. For well, the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin with at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Notice here it says, obey not the gospel of God, not the gospel of men, not the gospel of some philosopher, but the gospel of God. And if the righteous scareless, scarelessly be saved, now I'm reminded of the prophet where he declared that our righteousness would be as filthy rags. But here it says here, and if the righteous scarelessly be saved, where shall the iron godly and the sinner appear? That last verse, actually, in that chapter, that 19th verse, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. The verse of Scripture I'd like for you to sort of reminisce on just a little bit in that 18th verse is, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, 
Where shall thy godly and the sinner appear? A lot, a lot of routes we could go right here, the broad road, the narrow road. It gives us, it certainly should provoke us this evening to thought. And let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening. These precious moments we have together as a church family here. Lord, as saints of God, only by your blood, grace and mercy and forgiveness, long-suffering. Father, we're reminded of your attributes, mercy, and holiness, and truth. And Lord, we're dependent upon you this evening. We pray that you store our hearts and our minds in all truth. And Lord, lay on our hearts tonight what you would have for us here this evening as a people. We pray for those that are not here this evening. Lord, we have several in our church family that are not here today. We, you know exactly where they're at. Lord, we lift them before the throne. This revival, Father, that you would send a peculiar unction and anointing, Father, that this revival would be heartfelt and stir every heart, rekindle saints, sinners would be saved, backsliders reclaimed, come back to where they ought to be. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? What shall the envy of them that obey not the gospel of God? Captain Keith and I was, we was speaking this afternoon, sharing some about missions, and Jamaica came up. And he's heard this, and we knew a missionary, who I knew who he was. Dr. Dale Yuckham was a missionary in Jamaica for, for quite a few years. But Jamaica has quite a history. And uh, back during the age what they call the golden age of piracy. There was a place in Jamaica called Port Royal. And uh, actually, we served as chaplain on board ship and a dive op supervisor on a ship that, that was bringing up pirate treasure off the coast of Cape Cod, off the Whale Fleet. It was a slave ship that had been commandeered and captured by pirates, and it was called the Widow. And they turned it into a mighty powerful gunship. After months at sea, they came back into Cape Cod with, they said, 54 tons of gold. Can you imagine that? Wow. African jewelry and emeralds of all kind. They had been very successful pirates. The captain was called Black Sam Bellamy. A lot of people don't know that. America wasn't the first government to ever come up with some sort of democracy. The pirates were the first ones they would hire their captains and their quartermasters. It didn't matter if they were a hot and top from New Guinea and couldn't read and write, or a graduate of Oxford. It didn't make no difference. If they locked him, he could navigate, he was a captain. Black like Sam Bellamy was a man that had left Cape Cod. He heard that they were salvaging gold and silver off of the Spanish fleet that sunk off the east coast of Florida, which what we know as the Treasure Coast. He didn't do too well that, so he cast his hat with a band of pirates. And they all through the Caribbean. They sought to be free men. Back during that day in history, if you study your history a little bit, to live in Europe and other places, it was just borderline slavery. I mean, if you wore clothes in old English, they called too gaudy. In other words, clothes that were too expensive, they thought, for your social status, then you might spend two or three days in the stockade with your hand and your head hanging out and hoping that family would come around and give you a drink of water or something to eat. Study your history and you'll find that out. So a lot of men, well, they, they had a desire to be free men, so they took to the seas. A lot of the pirates weren't cutthroats and murderers, such certainly some must have been, but they, a lot of them just sought to be free men. So having said all that, these fellows were all headed back into Cape Cod, and they went into a northeasterly, and their ship sunk off the coast of Wellfleet. Out of 240-some men, there's like six survivors in the spring of the year in that ice-cold water off the Cape Cod. Now, getting back to Jamaica, that's where I wanted to take you to. It was a pirate's haven. Convicts, felons, pirates of all culture and color and language congregated there. It became one of the wealthiest cities on planet Earth. Why? 
because they've been robbing the British and the, and, and the English and the Portuguese and the French and the Spanish for quite a while. And they accumulated quite a bit of wealth there at that Port Royal. Well, so they decided since they were an upcoming city, even though they perhaps might not have fit into the world society and a good social status because of their background and their vocation, they decided they wanted to be like everybody else. So they wanted to have a mayor. So they found themselves a mayor. You're going to be mayor. Can you imagine? You'll either be mayor or walk the plank. Well, I don't know if they did that or not, but the point being is they, they had a mayor, and then, but they decided they was going to have a church. Now imagine that. Here's a bunch of pirates been robbing ships, robbing all the world's nations now for the last how many years? Long time. Now they're going to have a, they're going to have a church. Well, where in the world are we going to find a preacher around this place? <laughs> Well, they, they finally, somebody located one, locked up in a jail. They captured him off one of the ships they had commandeered, so they got him a preacher. Now, the, what I'm sharing with you right now is actually in the archives of Jamaica. If you had a mind to go to Kingston, Jamaica, and could look into the archives, you could find this story. It may not be for a but it's going to be the gist of what we're sharing with you right now. So they found him a preacher. They built him a church. Sunday came along. And according to the books, he just let them have it. <laughs> he told them they all need to repent and get saved, be born again. They had to quit all this robbing and stealing and pillaging and all the stuff they were doing. They came to him after the service and said, now wait a minute. We, we, we brought you here to pastor this church not to deny, de denounce our lifestyle. You know, isn't that about how it is with a lot of churches today? Yeah. We didn't call you to come in here to denounce our lifestyle. We just want you to, you know, look nice behind the pulpit and tickle our ears, make us feel good. Ain't that truth? That a lot of churches, that's about what's happening in it. Amen. Bring in the black lights, the dancing girls. They call them praise teams. Some of them don't have enough clothes on to walk a 12-gauge slug. Well, the men, too, they're not innocent either. Well, I don't know about all that back in the pirates if they were doing all that. That was probably before their time, but I'm sure they had enough enough going on without modern technology. I'm pretty sure of that because their hearts were the same. That preacher, they said, you're not to denounce our, our lifestyle. We like it. We, we like our way of living. They call it having fun. They don't know what having fun is. Having fun is when you come to church and feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Clap your hand, pat your feet, and holler out amen, amen and shout hallelujah once in a while. Amen. I know some folks don't shout out very loud, but hopefully they shout in the heart anyhow. That pretty, they told him, said, if you keep this up, we're going to execute you. We're going to shoot you in a firing squad or hang you from the neck till dead. I'm not sure. I don't recall which, what, what it was, but, but we're going to execute you. He said, as long as I have breath to breathe and can preach, I'm going to preach what God said to preach. Amen. So I don't know what his background was, but I'm convinced he was a real preacher. Baptist. Baptist. <laughs> Sunday come around. He let him have it again. Preacher, we warned you. We told you you can't be preaching like that. As long as I got breath to preach, I'm going to preach the Bible, the Word of God. They gave him one more chance. Sure enough, he let him have it again the third time. <laughs> Told him they need to repent. Well, regrettably, they look, they're going to lose their pastor. They took him out into a public execution, place of public execution. And they asked him, said, would you like to pray one last prayer before we send you on to, to, to the eternal world? He said, or do you have any last request? That's how it was. And, uh, he said, yeah, I'd like to pray one last prayer before I leave this, this earth. He said, all right, have at it. Pray your last prayer because this is it. That man prayed a prayer. And this prayer is actually recorded in the archives of Jamaican history. I may not quote it verbatim. He prayed something like this. He said, God in heaven, he said, I pray that you will, you will judge this wicked city of Port Royal just as you did those wicked cities of Solomon and Gomorrah. He said, so that it may be recorded and the world will know that there is a God in heaven that still reigns. That was his prayer. And they killed, they executed that man of God. Within 24 hours, history says, the greatest earthquake ever recorded during that era came 
<laughs> and hit that city of Port Royal. <clears throat> Port Royal today sits under 30 feet of ocean just off the coast of Kingston. I've been there. Yeah. It's under the sea, underwater. A lot of stories about that. Within 24 hours of that man departing this world and going to be with Jesus, a great earthquake came out of nowhere. Yeah. The whole Port Royal, I hope the whole the Port Royal was a peninsula that came out from Kingston and Jamaica. The whole thing just broke off and poof, right into the sea. Wow. You know what they added to the history on that? They said, We believe this is God, a prelude to God's judgment that's going to come upon this earth because of man's wickedness. Yeah. I've been to Jamaica several times. It's been a while since we've been there. Despite their smoking a lot of ganja and, and everything else that they do in Jamaica, they have a great reverence and respect for the, for the Lord and the things of God. You can get on a public bus and get up and start preaching, but it will get hushed quiet. Somebody there not so disrespected, they're going to be in trouble. That's how it is. That's how it is. It's, you can, one only place I've ever seen, I've ever placed, I've ever been, been to Africa, all over the Caribbean, the Bahamas. You can go down Lidstead in Jamaica. That's the closest town to where the mission compound is there in Jamaica, the place called Wellington York Street. And you go into you go into the town of Lidstead. On this, you got a street corner here, and you got a, a policeman out in the middle of the street. He's directing traffic. And when I say traffic, some of it's ox and carts. Some of it is car, is is automobiles. Of course, they all drive on the wrong side of the road. They got the steering wheel in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So you got a you got a rascal over here smoking a, a cigar ganja cigar, that's a marijuana cigar. Wow. I mean he's over here and I mean this smoke's just it's like a fog. I, I I witnessed this myself, so I'm just I'm explaining to you what I personally I witnessed. So you got a ganja, a, a rascal over here smoking a big giant cigar of marijuana or ganja they call it in Jamaica. Over here you got somebody tipping the bottle. You got a policeman out in the middle of the street, and on this other corner, you got a preacher telling them they all go to hell if they don't repent. <laughs> all on the same street corner. I didn't have a smartphone back then. I really wish I had a. I, that'd have been on Facebook for sure. <laughs> I'd have really know the whole thing. But that's Jamaica. Very unique. Actually, on their coins and their coat of arms, it says, By many, we are one. By many, we are one. I mean, what a history. Africans, Europeans, pirates, noblemen, just goes on and on and on. So why did I share that story with you? Because I think it kind of goes along with our scriptural here. There is judgment for wickedness. Amen. The ungodly and wickedness and things that are contrary to God's will, church, it will come to an end. It will come to an end. I know I've shared this in the past. I feel like sharing it again. If you've heard it once, then pray I'll tell it better this time than I did last time. But there's a missionary. He's been in Africa. And he lost his family. Mar uh, malaria, who knows? Fevers of the jungle, fevers of some sort. He lost his family. He was coming back to just to sort of refresh himself and, and go back again from what I understood from reading it. But he was coming in. He just happened to be on the very same ship that Teddy Roosevelt was on. Remember, he was a big game hunter. He'd go to Africa and shoot elephants and tigers and, you know, all that sort of thing. Well, he was on the same ship on the way back into New York Harbor. The story went on how they had the, the, the Marine band out there, man. They were playing all that. I mean, here's a president coming back. He just shot a lion or whatever it was he shot over there. Man, they had the brass band playing all that. And he's back on there, and he's observing all this, and he's just thinking to himself. He's testifying, telling me. He just sort of felt sorry for himself. He said, this is just don't seem right. Here this guy is living in wealth and riches and involved in politics and corruption and all these things. And, and here we are, we've given our whole life to the Lord, my wife, my children. They're all buried back there in Africa someplace. And, you know, we've done all this trying to, for the sake of the gospel and getting our life to it and all that. He said the Lord spoke to him so clearly. He said he stood there feeling sorry for himself. Tears coming off his eyes. He said the Lord said, son, you're not home yet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you're not home yet. This guy's he's home right now, but you're not home yet. Oh man, he just he Amen. just whew, that's how the Lord works a lot of times. Amen. 
Yeah. Things look like it's not going just right. You're about to feel sorry for yourself. You've got to remind yourself, we're not home. The Bible said we are pilgrims and strangers passing through. We're aliens. We're not home yet. Jesus said he went to prepare a home for us. A mansion. He said, if it were not so, I would not tell you so. That's what he said. Expedient that I go away from my father's house of many mansions. He went to prepare one for you and for me. I don't really care about the mansion, but just listen to what Jesus said. So you see, there's reward for the righteous, and there is consequences for wickedness. Amen. Truly. Yeah. Consequences for wickedness. Why do people do the things they do? It's because their hearts are not right. Yeah. It's just that simple. The old saying is, quacks like a duck, looks like a duck. It probably is a duck. Amen. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When it's full of lies and slander and deceit and whatever else, we need to pray for that bunch. It don't matter who it is, where they're at, from Democrats to Republicans to whoever else to shoot big. In, good, in Luke's Gospel, I'd like to read just a little bit there. Luke's Gospel. I'm not going to read that whole chapter, but just, just a little bit. We quote a lot of this, a lot of us do. But sometimes it does as well to, re to remind ourselves from the Word. In Luke's Gospel in the 21st chapter, we know what that chapter is about. It, walk it goes with the 24th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. But when you shall hear, in that ninth verse, breaking in that 21st chapter in the ninth verse, but when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For well, these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. <laughs> I don't listen to the news much, but I'm always, almost every time I ever hear anything from somebody, well, China's about to jump on us. China's about to go to war with us. Or this little, oh, that little short man over there in Korea. Gonna start pushing buttons and nuclear war. I mean, you, have y'all not been hearing this kind of thing all the time? Wars and commotions and rumors of war. But be not terrified. I had somebody on the plane one time flying with me overseas, and they were really scared to death to fly. Finally got them on the plane, and they said, well, one thing about it, if we go down, we'll just go back up in glory. Amen. Amen. That's what it took to get him on the plane, wasn't it? Amen. <laughs> so I guess if they start pushing buttons, we just it's just instant glory is all it is if you're right for the Lord. Right. Instant glory. Yep. These things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then he said unto them, nations shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. We see it every day. We see it every day. These people that hate our country, they hate us for no reason. But it's prophecy. It's, it's Bible. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, different places. Are you all aware of the fact that we have some major fault lines in this country? Amen. That your former pastor, Brother Wayne Allen, and I, I just came back from Haiti and at that time, there was a tea party in Cross City, and uh, we were sort of chaplain there. They'd, have, they'd ask us to come up and open up in prayer and close in prayer. And we'd have political candidates and different interesting people come by and speak, and quite a crowd would attend that tea party meeting. We had a man there that had just retired from NASA. His name was John Casey, Dr. John Casey. He was one of the world's top climologists. And he was there speaking for probably two hours. And we said under him, he was telling about the changes that was going to take place in our weather. He said, we've entered into a cycle. He was telling what a bunch of nonsense this global warming is, by the way. He said, he said it's not that. He said, it is a cycle. And he showed his charts and graphs. And he said, the earth has been through this before. He said, this particular cycle is a 30-year cycle. He said, we're already about two or three years in it. That's probably been eight, ten, eight years ago, ten years ago. So now we're actually further into it. He said it will peak out, and then it will diminish, and you got to kind of get back to where it was previously. We're actually seeing that. The, the weather becoming more unpredictable, more erratic, more intense, and, and we're seeing that. Earthquakes, should I say, <laughs> hurricanes. Okay. How many years have they say it's been since one ever came in like it did here recently? That some of the elderly people around Dixie County said they've never ever remembered anything like that in their lifetime. Now I thought I heard somebody say it's been like a hundred and some years since one 
Not Florida. We're talking about this area. See, so I, I know authority on that. That's what we've been hearing anyhow. But anyhow, earthquakes, in divers places, famines, pestilences. We may not be seeing that here in this country, but I can promise you it's taking place. Amen. Brother Howie's always reminding us when he passes the jar, Haiti, Africa, people are literally starving to death. Pestilences. We were reared up on a farm. We used to do a lot of gardening. We don't do too much anymore. But I've never seen a time. You can't hardly raise anything without putting some crop dust or something on it. Keep the bugs meeting it all up. Am I right or wrong about that? Fearful sights and great signs, and there shall be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up into the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. It's happening in other countries, believe me. There are countries, if you proclaim the name of Jesus or Christianity, it'll cost you your life or you'll rot in prison someplace. Yep. Be forgotten about. It shall turn and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your heart, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, with all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. I want to tell you something. You get in a situation for a defense of the gospel or talking about Jesus, I want you to know right now, with those things that you have taken in in Sunday school, in church, through the preaching, through the teaching, It'll come to you. The Lord will bring it out like it was fresh off the press. And the Lord will give you an anointing to say what you need to say. Been there and done that. Praise God. Amen. We don't need to be fearful about it. Perfect love casts out all fear, by the way. But the Lord will give you an anointing and an unction to, to give you strength that you didn't know you had. Can't threaten me with heaven. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Amen. 16th verse. You shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. <laughs> I wouldn't even have time to begin sharing with you, my wife and I, along this line right here. Back when we first went to Haiti, our blood kin thought that we were we was taking our children out to the Middle East to have them beheaded or something. They just don't, didn't understand. <clears throat> well, it's kind of comical in a way. One time we actually had one time we had what was called a preacher's rendezvous. We had a bunch of preachers and been preaching all morning. Uh, the different preachers would preach at different services. We had a good time. We had a meeting. We called it the preacher's rendezvous. And it was right on the Ohio River in Kentucky and south, southeastern Ohio. Well, somebody was trying to get our kids taken so they wouldn't have to go back to Haiti. I wouldn't name no names, blood kin, but nevertheless. <laughs> The children's Gestapo showed up. They got other names for them. I don't even know what they call them nowadays. We always call them the Gestapo. But they showed up. And the word was we had them tied up to electric poles, beating them with belts, and they were starving to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might not have been too far off of the beating part, but they weren't tied up and didn't have to tie them up. They might have gotten to hind in a couple of times if they needed it. Although that particular time, I don't recall ever that happening. I think Brother Yeri took one of his boys out and whooped him. That's probably what that was about. And I, I know them boys, I'm sure they was probably overdue for it. But nevertheless, they came, and it just so happened they came at lunchtime. And I'll never forget, dear Brother Foster opened the door when they were, the authorities were knocking on the door with a big old fried chicken leg and eating on it in his hand when they opened the door. We were all starving to death. The Lord just must have ordained the time because they came when we were feasting. We didn't know if I was starving. I just about have to laugh about that. Yeah. Make a long story short, we had to send our children, our belongings, across the river into Kentucky and sent one of our preachers south, way deep south, to meet up with us. And then we had to borrow another vehicle and not drive our own. We had to drive straight to Miami because the passports had expired on our children. And we was, that was one thing we were doing. We were getting the passports renewed. Well, used to, you could go to Miami and have it new the same, renewed the same day. So we left there, went straight to Miami in another vehicle in case they were looking for ours. <laughs> we weren't criminals. We just trying to get back to Haiti, that's all. <laughs> and we did. We got back to Miami, got them passports, got on a plane, back overseas we were. 
Now, that was in the Lord's business. That was in the Lord's work. Yeah. Well, that just came to my mind. I know I'm sharing a, little th a few things. It's not chapter and verse, but I sh we shared it with you anyhow. You, be, you shall be betrayed by parents and brethren. If it hadn't happened, it may. And friends, and some of you sh shall they cause to be put to death. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. And your patience possess you your souls. Preached out from the text one time. In your patience possess you your souls. Over the 25th verse. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon, the stars. Has anybody kept up with all these super moons and blood moons? You know we find that in the Bible. Matter of fact, all mariners know that. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailor take warning. Yeah. Matter of fact, he was reproving the Pharisees over that. said, you know all about them signs and you don't recognize the son of man? <laughs> Here you are, doctors of the law. You're supposed to know all of this. And there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars upon the earth, distress of nations. And with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Heart attacks. I mean, just all the time, and sometimes seemingly for no reason. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth of the piles of heaven shall be shaken. And this last verse here, just a part of this, well, two verses here I like to read here. That 28th verse says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. In that 32nd verse. Verily I say unto you. This generation shall not pass away. Till all be fulfilled. He's speaking here. From that 29th verse. In that 32nd verse. He's speaking about. What Bible scholars refer to. As the fig tree generation. And I, there, that would have to be another time. But there's a lot of prophecy there. There's a lot of biblical prophecy. There. It has to do with the generation. 40 years, 70 years, man's a lot of time. And uh, we just, time this evening won't permit us to get into that. That'll be another time. Let's finish up here. Heaven and earth, that 32nd verse, heaven, heaven and earth shall not, shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. If God said it, he meant what he said, he said what he meant, and you can bank on it. Yes, you can. We're going to stop there. When you see all these things, know that your redemption draws nigh. God has rewards for the righteous. He has rewards for the wicked. We need to understand that. And by the help of God, His grace and grit, we're going to walk the narrow road. We're going, we're going to walk in the way of righteousness and holiness. Not because we're worthy, we're not. But because of His merits, of His blood on Calvary. Because He's worthy. We're just ambassadors. We're, we're ambassadors. And we have we have fringe benefits. Like this morning, we pray for healing. We, uh, James said, if anybody be sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And some folks, if you have a discouragement, uh, the devil will come and try to discourage you, by the way. He wants to put that fire out. He don't even want a little spark. He wants to damp, put it all out. Even a spark will get attention. That spark gets a little bigger, it'll get more attention. If it comes a flame, you can't help it. I've not noticed that. I've noticed a lot of folks will come back from a revival or a camp meeting and manage, and somebody out there that's never been around said, man, where in the world they been? Boy, they just, they're just overzealous, man. They just... <laughs> why? Because they, it's noticeable, that's why. In a good way. This is not about entertainment. This is of a spiritual essence. This is of a spiritual nature. It's not the same. If you want to get excited, you can go to a Gator football game if you're into that thing. You can go to Nashville, Tennessee and pat your foot. Clap your hand. In a rock and roll concert, you can do the same thing. But I'll tell you when it's felt in the heart, when it's heartfelt, see? That's the difference. When we know that we're the eighth chapter of Romans, there are therefore now no condemnation. Those are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. You get to the place where there's no condemnation. If there is condemnation, you can pray about that and get a, and get cure for it. The Lord will come and heal that. 
If you have a discouragement, the devil comes and tries to huff and puff and blow your fire out. Listen, there's a cure for that. The Lord will give us strength. He said if we just ask him, he give us more grace. Give us grace to who? The humble. Not the halt in the prideful, but the humble. Amen. And he'll give us a heart to do that which is right. I used to refer to salvation as perfect love. As perfect love. We love God. We love life because life is a gift from God. Amen. If we're saved and love the Lord, that don't mean that we hate life. We don't have to sit around like mules been sawing off, mule been chewing on saw, bro. I mean, because we're happy people. We're blessed people. <laughs> I know people manifest in a different way. Some folks just sit silently and are blessed in a peaceful way. Other folks, they get all excited like Brother Derek over there. He likes to run around the church. And, <laughs> you know, so, some folks just, just manifest themselves in different ways. We're not all the same. Preachers preach differently. Why? Because they have different kind. They have different preachers. That's why. I kind of like a variety. I guess that's why I like to slap your mama Creole seasoning so good. See, it's a mix of all them spices. And when you put it all together, it's got a good taste to it. Well, praise the Lord. Somebody surely likes that besides me. <laughs> all right, we come to a close this evening. It's been a good day. We need to really pray. Pastor, uh, Brother Golic. Alan Golick, our evangelist, will be on the road tomorrow on his way here from Florida, Mississippi. And we have, and uh, Brother Pastor Jim and his fo folks will be here tomorrow evening. Uh, I'm not sure who, what, who else is coming. We've sent the invites out. We're just going to make phone calls. Make phone calls. Invite somebody. Come out and hear this man. Hey, they'll not be sorry they did. He's a, he's a good, deep-worded preacher. If you've ever heard him, some, some of y'all have heard him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he'll be a blessing to us, I can tell you. All oh, in past Brother Dale Stickpin. He's been here. The singing reflects, sons. He'll be doing all the music for us. That man loves the Lord. He's genuine. He's a genuine. So we're, we're blessed. We got, we're going to have an evangelist and a good, a good man that loves the Lord that's just got a heart for folks. And he'll be here and doing the music for us. And we just, we, so we need to pray. We need to pray and do our part. Invite who you can out. Take one of these flowers. We need to get some in Hitchcock's. We need to get some over in Cross City. Uh, just wherever you think is a good place to hang one. Hang one up. Folks will see it. And uh, one mistake we should have had it on the radio. It's probably too late now. I don't know. I could call Rhonda Cook up. She might get it on there. I don't know. And uh, have it on the radio. Anybody have anything to add? Something to say? Testimony? If you need prayer, you know the altar is always open. If you have a, a need, any kind of need at all, prayer is altar's always open. Okay. Any thoughts, suggestions? Thank the Lord that uh, the hurricane went 